Warm welcome to an yet another discussion on gate electronics and communication related papers. Today I am going to check gate 2016 electronics and communication set 1. Moving to the first question, consider a two port network with the transmission matrix T equal to ABCD. If the network is reciprocal, then it's a purely a theoretical question for a reciprocal condition determinant ABCD equal to 1. Right. Next, moving to second question, the Laplace transform of the causal periodic square wave of period T shown in the figure below is, right? So, a periodic square wave is shown and we have to calculate the Laplace transform of this periodic function. Actually, this question may be classified into signals and system topic or maybe network theory related topic. Anyway, I am checking its solution. For that, I am recollecting some basics about this signal we know the laplace transform of u of t equal to 1 by s now we can check what is the laplace transform of u of t minus t by 2 right u of t minus t by 2 axis is t so this, the signal is u of t minus capital t by 2 so it's laplace transform is nothing but it is 1 by s into e raised to minus s t by 2 right e raised to minus st by 2 now coming to the given signal given signal can be split up for a single period as right for a single period up to t it can be split as the summation of the above two signals the given signal can be marked as a combination of these two signals right u of t minus u of t minus t by 2 on adding these two signals we will obtain the original signal as from 0 to t by 2 the value remains as 1 and after capital t by 2 the value remains to be 0 right now i can mark the laplace transform of a single period of this signal as f1 of s equal to 1 by s minus right e raised to minus s t by 2 by s that is equal to 1 minus e raised to minus st by 2 by s. But the signal is actually repeating. It's a periodically repeating one. So the final Laplace transform is f of s equal to f1 of s divided by 1 minus e raised to minus s into the repeating time period t. Right? This is the Laplace transform of one period of the signal. As it is repeating for our, it must be divided by 1 minus e raised to minus s into capital T, where capital T is the time period. So, substituting f1 of s here, 1 minus e raised to minus s t by 2 divided by s into 1 minus e raised to minus s t. But, we know from the identity, a plus b into a minus b equal to a square minus b square. So, I can split 1 minus e raised to minus st into 1 plus e raised to minus st by 2 into 1 minus e raised to minus st by 2 right so 1 square right 1 square minus e raised to minus st by 2 into e raised to minus st by 2 that turns out to be e raised to minus st so i am substituting this part into here I obtain like this so cancelling these two terms the final answer turns out to be 1 by s into 1 plus e raised to minus s t by 2 so the answer is option B moving to the next question a network consisting of a finite number of linear resistor R inductor L and capacitor C elements connected all in series or all in parallel is excited with a source of the form sigma k equal to 1 2 3 a k cos k omega naught t where a k not equal to 0 and omega naught not equal to 0. The source has non-zero impedance. Which one of the following is a possible form of the output 
measured across a resistor in the network. So, in the question, it is mentioned as there is a combination of resistor, inductor and a capacitor which are connected in series or in parallel. So, I am taking a simple combination R, L and C. Only 1R and 1L and 1C. And uh, applying a voltage R, L, C and uh, marking the voltage as V of T. And V of T is given, right? V of T is given by sigma k equal to 1 to 3 a k cos k omega naught t, right? With a k not equal to 0 and omega not not equal to 0. That means it is a purely an AC signal. Now, I am writing what is this V of T. Substituting k equal to 1 a1 cos omega naught t plus substituting k equal to 2 a2 cos 2 omega naught t and uh, again substituting k equal to 3 a3 cos 3 omega naught t. So this is actually the input signal applied here. The output voltage is measured across the resistor too. As the resistance, inductance and capacitance all are linear elements. That means it cannot generate a new frequency or new additional frequency. So checking the options, it must not be B or D because checking the option B there are actually four times are generated four frequency times are generated as I mentioned earlier that this is a linear combination R L and C all these elements are linear elements so it cannot generate a new frequency similarly checking the option D one frequency is disappeared that is also an impossible one so only reliable options are either A or C now checking option C option C indicates that the output voltage across the resistor is same as the input voltage. It is also impossible one because some voltage must definitely drop across inductor and capacitor. So option C is not also possible. Now coming to the option A, it is marked as sigma k equal to 1, 2, 3. So only three terms are there. That's good. Next coefficient is BK and where BK not equal to AK, right? So it may be the correct answer, right? bk cos k omega naught t plus 5k the phase difference is actually generated because of the combination of inductor and capacitor now moving to the next question in the circuit shown in the figure we have to calculate the maximum power in what delivered to the resistor r is right so in this type of questions actually this part of the circuit has no effect but this is given to calculate the dependent voltage source right so on checking this portion we can easily write v naught v naught equal to the voltage drop across 2 kilo ohm that is equal to total voltage 5 into that branch resistance 2k divided by total resistance 2 plus 3 so that tends out to be 2 volt so v naught equal to 2 volt now i am plotting this part alone so now the figure tends out to be this Actually, I replaced the resistance R because we have to calculate at this point A, B, Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance, right? We have to calculate actually the Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance. VTH is actually the open circuit voltage measured across A, B. So, V, O, C equal to the voltage 100 V naught, 100 V naught, but V naught is 2. So, 100 into 2 open circuit voltage into this branch of the resistance open circuit voltage into 40 k right because we are measuring open circuit voltage across this 40 k so so the voltage 100 v naught into 40 k divided by total resistance 40 plus 10 k right 40 plus 10 k so that tends out to be 200 into 40 by 50 so 200 by 50 is 4 4 into 40 is 160 160 volt is the open circuit voltage. Next, we have to calculate Thevenin resistance. For calculating Thevenin resistance with a dependent source, actually we apply 1 ampere current source. But this dependent source is active one. So Thevenin resistance is open circuit voltage by short circuit current. So open circuit voltage is 160 volt. And now we have to calculate the short circuit current. Right? So short circuited current is IAC equal to voltage 100 V naught. 100 V naught is 2. So 100 into 2 by resistance 10K. Right? 
as 40k is bypassed only 10k is there in the circuit so short circuit current is 200 by 10k equal to 20 milliampere right so short circuit current is 20 milliampere i am substituting here that is 20 milliampere or kilo right so 160 by 20 equal to 8 8 kilo ohm is the answer but we have to calculate actually the maximum power delivered maximum power delivered is nothing but it is v square thevenin divided by 4 rth right v square thevenin we have obtained as 160 so 160 into 160 divided by 4 into 8k right so simplifying this we obtain as 0.8 watt so 0.8 watt is the final answer moving to the next question an ac voltage source v equal to 10 sin t volts is applied to the following network assume that r1 equal to 3 kilo ohm r2 equal to 6 kilo ohm and r3 right r3 equal to 9 kilo ohm and that the diode is ideal we have to find the rms current i rms through the diode so here it is a cube connection of resistors so here it is r1 another r1 is there and finally another r1 is there too similarly the next connected element to r1 is r2 right so anyway i am redrawing this figure so i redraw it as in the figure now this is the point at which the signal is entering and this is the point at which the signal is leaving now checking the circuit there is a 3 ohm 3 ohm resistance are marked in yellow color similarly 6 ohm resistor path are marked in white color and 9 ohm resistance are marked in green color too right so now if i apply a current it will split uniformly into this 3 3 ohm resistance right so the potential difference or the voltage drop across these yellow points right first yellow point second yellow point and third yellow point remains same i repeat as it is a symmetrical connection the current entering at this point splits equally into all these three resistance so the net voltage across this dotted potentials remains zero or the voltage at the yellow points all are equal or the voltage at the yellow points are equal that means there is no voltage difference between two yellow points so voltage difference between two points equal to zero indicates that that two points are same right so i am again redrawing the figure now before redrawing we can check other points too that is the white points again there are three white points are there so again the potential difference between the three white points remains same so now i am redrawing the figure there are three three ohm resistance so first three ohm resistance second three ohm resistance all are at same potential right so now there are white six ohm resistance so i am marking white six ohm resistance there are six six ohm resistance too so one two three four five and six 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 ohm resistance all are at same potential one two three four five and six now there are three nine ohm resistance too right one two and three right marking the values nine 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 similarly for the other cases too now we can calculate the effective resistance of this combination r effective equal to 3 3 ohms in parallel so the net resistance that is 1 by r equal to 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 from that r equal to 1 right plus similarly 6 6 ohm resistance in parallel so net resistance is 1 right similarly 3 9 ohm resistance in parallel so 9 by 3 3 so the total resistance is 5 so the total resistance is 5 kilo ohm. now we can uh, redraw this concept into the figure right so the voltage source is there that is 10 sin omega t next a diode this is an ideal diode now the resistance 5 kilo ohm. 
so this is basically a half wave rectifier circuit so we know the output of the half wave rectifier circuit that is this way around the maximum value is 10 by 5 2 i am marking this as current axis i milliampere right and this is t so 0 to pi right similarly this is up to 2 pi now we have to calculate RMS value, RMS current we have to calculate. So for a half wave rectifier circuit, we know RMS current equal to maximum current by 2. So here maximum current is 2. So 2 by 2 is 1. So 1 milliampere is the final answer. 1 milliampere. So the answer is 1 milliampere. So for more gate tutorials, subscribe my channel. Now I am signing out till we meet again with an another gate tutorial. Thank you.